So, we have uh, seen the overall energy scenario, we have also looked at uh, different ways in which we can do the energy economics calculations for projects. Now, we are going to look at energy resources. So, when we talk about energy resources, <coughs> there are some questions which you may want to think about. We have heard, you might have heard the term peak oil. So, what is this term peak oil? Do we believe in peak oil, peak coal, peak natural gas? We all know and we have seen in our overall energy balance where we look at India or we look at the world uh, that predominantly today our energy use is based on fossil fuels. So, the question that we want to ask is are fossil fuels depletable? Will their consumption decline? How soon will they decline? How long will the fuel fossil fuels last? And uh, so, this is some of the things that we will consider. We will, when we talk about resources, resources can be, energy resources can be stocks or flows. And in the initial part, we are going to talk about resources which are stocks. Stocks means that they will be, they can, they can be stored, they can be transported and uh, then you have an uh, estimate of how much we have, how much we have in terms of the resource and how long, how much are we using annually. So, we want to get an estimate of how long that fuel would last. So, if you see there is this interesting quote from the Saudi Arabian oil minister who said that the stone age did not end for lack of stone and the oil end age will end long before the world runs out of oil. So, the estimation, the earlier calculations were where we would try to see how much stock is there at what rate are we using that stock and estimate how much time it will take. And uh, what has been said here is that it is all about dynamics, prices, substitutes and it is not necessarily about these estimates. However, it is still worthwhile to see uh, traditionally we have this concept of the geological resources and reserves. How do we characterize it? How do we estimate how much time it will last? if we have a certain consumption rate. So, we have this is the McKelvey diagram, uh, this is the diagram which was used um, sorry. Uh, and uh, this is shows the this is the basics by which we classify the resources. So, typically what happens is when we talk about uh, fossil fuels or we are looking at materials which are stocks. Uh, we look at some areas where we have done some extractions and we know that these are the, we have the, in the case of oil, you will have a um, uh, oil well dug and you will find that there is this percentage of concentration and it is viable to take the oil out. Uh, so, that would be something where you have actually um, conducted explorations and we know that this is the kind of uh, in this uh, situation we have the reserves. That means, the reserves are known uh, quantities um, and this could be which have been already measured. So, this is called proven and then there is a second portion where you have done some sample wells and you know that the uh, you have that whole area has similar kinds of rock formation. So, those will be called indicated and the third one is in similar areas and similar formulations we expect that though we have not done any exploration we think that it could be inferred that these will also have. So, whenever we have these estimates it is given in terms of proven indicated and inferred. And the probability of occurrence is highest in the case of proven, we have actually measured and quantified. So, we are quite sure that this is existing, indicated with some lower probability and inferred with a uh, with even a lower probability. So, this is in terms of the resource. Uh, now, there are also other undiscovered, there is this whole set where there are un other undiscovered resources and uh, which are hypothetical, speculative and also in these 
there are two axes. The one axis is in terms of the probability and the second one is in terms of the economics. So, the reserves which are easily extractable with higher uh, concentrations, the cost of extraction would be much lower. So, they may be currently economic. As the technologies change, things which were not economic earlier can become economic. So, this uh, the between reserves, there is this concept of reserves and resources. Resources may be uh, known occurrences, but they are currently not economic to extract. So, resources is a slightly larger term which has a um, larger value and resources is. So, this concept of resources and reserves is shown in this classification which is the McKelvey diagram and this is how it is plotted uh, with the kind of increase uh, as you go down, uh, as you go up, it is the more economic, the costs are lower and here this is the highest probability and lowest cost and then you go for lower probabilities in this on this side and you have higher costs uh, uh, going in this direction. Uh, so, there are um, two kinds of uh, beliefs about resources. Uh, one is that if we look at a finite amount of reserve which is there in the ground and if we look at a finite amount of reserve and we know that we have a particular kind of uh, extraction pattern, we can estimate then how much time that extraction will occur. So, if we have a finite reserve and we are talking of a stock, if we have a production in a particular year and we have T as a time and we have P and we say that okay, let the production be constant at the rate at which it is being consumed. Then if we look at this area under the curve, this becomes a the static, we define a static R by P ratio or the R by P ratio which is simply divide the total amount of known reserve and divide it by the production in a particular year assuming that it is constant. This will give us the number of years at which the resource will last at the current level at which we are uh, consuming it. Um, in many cases as we you know where the population grows exponentially and uh, the requirement for many of the uh, fossil fuels, coal, oil, natural gas has been growing exponentially. For instance, if you take the example numbers, uh, if you look at in India 1970, we use about 70 million tons of coal. And in 2012, we used 557 million tons of coal. So, you can see very clearly that there is a exponential growth. You can, uh, so we are going to look at these following models. We will start with the static R by P ratio which I have already discussed. We will look at the exponential growth model and then we will look at the logistic growth curve. Uh, where uh, we take the fact that the area under the curve is bounded and this yet there is a finite resource and then we we'll look at Adelman's model. Then this is the uh, definition of the ge geological survey, the identified accumulation that can be extracted profitably under present economic conditions, that is the reserve and resources are the reserves plus all accumulations that may eventually become available, they, are, they may be today undiscovered but discovered but currently not technically or economically viable. So, resource is uh, greater than the reserve. And if you see this is, you, I told you that we are going for an exponential growth rate for uh, coal, it has been growing exponentially. And if you see from uh, the uh, early years and uh, this is the kind of growth. Just to give you an example as we said. If we take 1970 and 2012, we can find out what is the growth rate. We can just take 557 divided by 70 and calculate the compound annual growth rate. Now, 70 to 2012 uh, is 
42 years and you will find that this g corresponds to roughly 5 percent or 0 0.05. In the recent past you will find that coal has been growing at 6 to 7 percent per year. So, the question is that uh, if we think in terms of an exponential growth, then obviously that static R B instead of the static R by P ratio, the number of years for which the coal will last would be much lower and we can do that calculation. Just to give you a sense of it, if you look at the coal mines and the coal resources, you find that most of our coal little bit in the central area and uh, the significant proportion uh, in the east. These are where the coal mines are there, there is some in the northeast, there is some lignite here in uh, Tamil Nadu and some other uh, things, but this is where the distribution of the coal is. Uh, so, from the uh, integrated energy policy document, this gives us a sense of what are the reserves which was there in 2003-04. You can see that the reserves were talking of 34,000 million tons and the production was 414. If you divide these two, you get a R by P ratio of about 80. If we took proven plus indicated that R by P ratio goes up to 140. That means that at the at that level of production, this will last for about 140 years and similar things can be done for oil and natural gas. If you update these numbers, you can see that this is the number that you have in 2013-14 and we can calculate the R by P ratio for this. Uh, the if from the GSI, if you look at it, you will find that over the years, the proven reserves also keeps increasing. And today, if you see in the 2018 values, I think it is of the order of about 148,000 million tons. So, if we took 148,000 million tons and yeah. If you uh, look at this number of 148,000 million tons and you divide that by the annual production, 148,000 million tons of coal, annual production roughly about 600 million tons of coal, the number that we get static R by P ratio is about 200 years. So, we have a reasonable amount of coal, though it is low grade coal and of course, as we have seen there is a problem in terms of the CO2 emissions and so people we are talking about not using the coal. Uh, so, we would like to see now uh, if we have an exponential growth rate, how do we make this calculation. So, that means we are talking of let us say that it, this is growing at 5 percent. Um, then what will happen is in the first year we use P, next year we use P into 1 plus G and so on, P into 1 plus G raised to N. We want to find out N, the number of years in which uh, the um, uh, resource will get depleted. So, that means here instead of that static, we have P and this is P T by T. So, of course, you know that you know area under the curve for an exponential curve is not bounded, but if we have a finite reserve, then this is R and we want to find out what is the time when this gets sort of uh, cut off, right. So, we have already calculated if it was a static, then it lasts for much longer, this is 246 years is what we had calculated. We want to now calculate what is this value, right. So, in order to do that calculation, we will take total reserve will be P, P 1 plus G raised to N. So, we can multiply this R into 1 plus G this is simple actually it is just a geometric progression 1 plus g raised to n plus 1 
we can take 2 minus 1 and we get r 1 plus g minus r is equal to p 1 plus g raised to n plus 1 minus p and this is nothing but r g is equal to p into 1 plus g raised to n plus 1 minus so r by p is equal to one plus g raised to n plus one minus one by g. Now if you look at this we want to calculate n. This is what we want to calculate. We want to calculate n, we know r by p and we know g. We want to calculate n. So let us take this and all that we need to do is we take r by p into g is 1 plus g raised to n plus 1 minus 1, 1 plus g raised to n plus 1 is equal to 1 plus g into r by p. Take natural logs on both sides. So, we get n plus 1 l n 1 plus g right is equal to l n 1 plus g into r by p. So, n is equal to or n plus 1 is equal to l n 1 plus g into r by p divided by l n 1 plus g. Now, let us just plug in the values for the numbers that we had. We calculated for India for coal that r by p ratio uh, was about was 246 and we said that let us consider a growth rate of 5 percent. We can of course take a higher growth rate. So, we can suppose we take 5 percent then n plus 1 will be ln 1 plus 0 0.05 into 246 divided by ln 1.05. You can calculate this it turns out to be ln uh, this is 2.59 by 0 0.049 it turns out to be 53 so n 52 so we have, of course if we see if the time which we are talking of in this is going to be lower than the time which we had calculated for the static r by p ratio. If we instead of 6 5 percent if this was 6 percent then you will find that the, the life will de n will decrease and n turns out to be 47 years. So, remember we talked about a static r by p ratio and we also talked about the ratio if we are going at an exponential growth rate. Now, in actual practice what will happen is uh, we expect that the pattern will not be exponential and suddenly coming uh, to 0. So, we expect th this is this is similar to what Adelman had done, but we have also uh, this has been also done by Hubbard who was a geologist and he proposed the method it is ca called the Hubbard model. Mm -hmm.